people sit down and uh, we will start. Uh, welcome guys to this Barcom session. Uh, what is the name of the session? Up Clinic, yeah. <laughs> Bitchy Up Clinic. Uh, the main purpose is about proposing us a few applications that we can just test and then slap. <laughs> and uh, actually tell you what you, we think about what, yeah, but that's never the, no, no, that's never the, the pro, that's never, uh, the problem is never coming from Jenny Motion. Okay. Sure. That's the first rule. <laughs> uh, no, uh, so the idea is to test apps and uh, so we can just give you a few feedback and uh, trying to help you maybe to do better as a user because we are all user. <laughs> Uh, okay, do you guys already have uh, people that uh, submit something? Yeah, we're trying to install the first one. Okay, so this, the, first one, since the first one is loading, uh, let's introduce ourselves because we have time to kill. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe we will do, do it for the next loading. <laughs> yeah. Can you help? You, you have all the application you want. Okay. So I'm Eyal Desmi. I'm working at Jenny Mobile. I'm working on the Jenny Motion project. That's an Android emulator you maybe already heard about. Uh, who's the next? Ben, that's your turn. Uh, I'm Ben. I'm an Android developer at Nevada in London. Uh, and yeah, I've been coming to DroidCon for quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to. See your apps and bitch about it. <laughs> He's working. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi, I'm Mario Viviani from Italy. I'm uh, an Android developer. I run my own startup. It's called Mario Apps. And also, I'm a Google developer expert for Android. And I'm, of course, here to destroy apps. Hi all, I'm Tim and I've been working as a Samsung developer advocate. Now I work for PayPal as the DevRel lead in Europe and I used to work as an Android engineer in Berlin. So I'm looking forward to flame you. <laughs> Hello, I'm Roberto. I work in Berlin uh, as an Android engineer for Texter and I don't know why I'm here, but well, okay, that's it. <laughs> Hello, my name is Taylor. I'm coming from Malaysia. Um, so I'm an Android designer um, and also a Google developer expert in UX design. So I'm not going to beach or flame you, but just helping you to improve your applications. Thank you. Uh, I am Sebastiano. I'm uh, working in Novoda with Ben from London. Uh, I'm like the least important person on here right now. Uh, <laughs> and I have my own microphone apparently. Uh, <laughs> I hope that something interesting comes out of my mouth. If it doesn't, I'm sorry in advance. So because, because you got the mic and you have the computer, I let you start uh, by launching the first application. Okay, so start with mental arithmetic. Okay, Google Play Games. Yeah, this is so not going to work with the network. Hey, <laughs> it's not his fault, though. Yeah, so what is, what is this app used for? Yeah, um, author of the app, do you yeah, want to come a second and just introduce it briefly, explaining what, you want, what it does, what it is? Is that the name kind of tells it, but I'm not sure it's what I understand. If you want to do it in French, then he can translate. No, I won't. Or he can translate. <laughs> you will. Okay. C'est calcul mental, c'est une application de calcul mental, tout simplement. Voilà. C'est pour s'entraîner, il y a des classements en ligne, il y a plusieurs modes de jeu, et il y a un multijoueur, on peut affronter les gens en temps réel à faire des calculs. Okay, so voilà. in English, it's okay. an app to train yourself in mental arithmetics and you can challenge other people. You have yes. like real-time challenges, I guess. So yes, and rankings. 
And it finished loading. Yay. Yes. yes. Yeah. You have so to keep <coughs> try to profile. No. Yeah, but. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's yes. maybe the uh, first thing that we can say is that yeah. your user arrived on something that was loading. Uh, he don't really know your application. Uh, he launched the first time, and like us, he doesn't have a very good network, and maybe he doesn't have at it at all. So maybe it could be interesting for uh, your application and to convert people to by uh, for using it. Sorry, my English is very bad. <laughs> uh, to maybe avoid this mandatory process for start the first time your app by maybe proposing a first party uh, without. Be signed in, yeah. so they know what is the concept. Maybe they don't want to challenge other friends right now, but they just want to play with your game. Yes, but, uh, uh, I can say it in French. But in first, I ask to create a profile to have the pseudo. That way, it will the score with the pseudo for the placement. <laughs> Maybe yeah, we can yeah, just yeah. end. Uh, so you will have a mic, and we will share the mic. Okay? Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, what he told that is that uh, because he need the 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 the, the he need the the Pro nickname, the profile, yeah. and uh, yeah, sure. But do you need to load the Google Play games, and do you need absolutely uh, because no, you, you can? C'est pour les statistiques. C'est pour qu'il y ait plus de connexion uh, avec Google Play games. So c est, c est one, one thing I can say, uh, you have. Examples of other applications like games, like even today, uh, a game was released called Hacked Apps. Yes. Uh, they don't force logging in, so they will still display like scores of other people that have played. Uh, might not be directly your friend because we don't know anything about the user when it starts playing, but you can play. And then at the end, after like one or two games, you have your score and say, "Oh, I'm doing a good score." Now I want to share. Yes. And now is when you create but your profile, okay. as in later on. Yes. So you see, right. you just need to first make the user want to use, yeah. Uh, you need to make the user want to use your app, even if you maybe don't have right now the profile, but they will use it for sure more than if they just for the first time, they open it and then it's loading for one, two, three minutes if there is a network problem. Because it's all right, I always play on the metro. Do you have network on the metro? No. I don't. Yeah, you, you either. So that's the problem. So I think you, you missed a lot of users. But, uh, you, no, yes. On peut créer son profil, mais là c'est c'est hors ligne. On peut oui. le créer hors ligne aussi. Yes, but the first thing we've seen it's the loading. You're right. If you need a nickname, got a nickname. Yes, but the Google Play Games loading was maybe something you could avoid. Okay. So just uh, let's move forward yeah. to get more into details of the app, I guess. Yeah. Um, a thing I would add, and probably he would have said it himself, is that big dialogue. First thing you see when you open the app. Like, it was a dialogue underneath another dialogue, and uh, he can explain it better than I can. <laughs> um, so, um, if for you that attended my sessions, so this will be a very, very good example that you can replace with a quick tutorial um, without actually having the users um, read through all the text. Because this is a game, I'm, I'm supposed? Yes. Okay, so game, what's important? The visual, the visual of the games that stimulate the users how this game is going to work. So, the first point, of course, they mentioned about the Google Play game sign in is totally unnecessary because the user have not experienced your game yet and you are forcefully them to sign in. And that's only cause frustration if you don't have connections. Second thing is that because of this text heavy, for me, I would not bother to read it. And even if I read it, I will forget in the next seconds. So what you can do is that convert this into some visual stimulated um, graphics. So like a quick tutorial to actually just allow the user to have like, impressions what, how your game is actually going to work and how fun is that? What kind of value that you can bring from? <clears throat> and the user will actually create a profile to explore it. Otherwise, this long text will actually make you feel like no, this is not the game that I want to play because too much explanation. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah. Uh, one, one thing I can say, uh, it does make it easier for you as a developer to just ask the user to sign in immediately, but it's, it goes against the user goals, which are in the end the most important thing you are trying to 
uh, achieve. Like you have to satisfy a user's need with your app. Uh, so I know it's harder to like uh, come up with a temporary solution to work around the, the need for, for login. But on the other hand, as, uh, as Taylor has said, it, the, you want the user, you want to retain users and a big chunk of uh, things to do before even getting to the first screen might be a bit intimidating to users. So it's, uh, it's added effort on development, that's for sure, but you're gonna benefit in the end, especially if you have like in-app purchases and uh, similar things. Because if you, if you want people to buy stuff, you want them to like it and you want, them, you want to keep them. So that in the end goes for you. Okay, I uh, want to say a couple of things about this. Uh, the first thing your app did was log in with Google Play Games. And then the first thing we see in this, in this screen is log in with Facebook. So you want to allow the user to, I guess, uh, log in in different socials, right? Um, so a good thing could be, for example, at this point, to let the user decide. Uh, if you, they want, maybe they want to log in with Facebook and don't want to log in with Play Services. Uh, let the user choose. Uh, so, for example, when it, it comes to a screen uh, where the user um, needs to input what, uh, what social uh, he wants to log in, uh, could be a good idea to put the, that uh, widget in that page. Um, also, um, I, saw, I see a couple of things. For example, you, the first thing you ask is nickname. I'm not sure about the uh, function of the uh, refresh icon there. What's the... Oh, so it's a, a placeholder for the, uh, for the user. In French or English? Oh, same. C'est pour actualiser la photo Facebook quand il est connecté avec uh, okay. Facebook. Okay. So, yeah, you might probably use a different uh, image since this one is the image for uh, refresh something. Et, et si ça actualise de toutes les données Facebook, quand le compte est lié avec Facebook, quand on clique sur actualiser, ça remplit tout tout seul, first name, last name, okay. uh, city et tout. Uh, so everything is built by the Facebook login. But maybe if he's using the Facebook login, he doesn't need this screen. Because you have all the information and you just, maybe you, you can just display it for him. But I don't feel everything. And if he wants to change his name, I don't know what, I'll let him do that. Yeah, but uh, do you think every user wants to change something when they are logging in this? I think yes. that just a few, or maybe, maybe, do you, maybe you don't need all these things also. That's, a, that's a, another, another question you, you, you could uh, wonder. You might just present, uh, if you want, to allow the user to change their information while they're logging in, you might just present a summary of what you got from uh, Google or Facebook and allow them to change it then or just say okay. okay. Especially when you uh, access data like my localization, which is my address and stuff like that, I'd probably not be willing to share that. So if you use a social sign-in, um, you should share why and which kind of data you access. So, especially my address, I probably wouldn't want to share with a random game I just downloaded, right? Assuming that my friends didn't use your apps before, I didn't get any recommendation. So, um, there's this issue that lots of people that visit your app might not convert into actually becoming players because there's this huge barrier over there. And um, also, you're asking for both nickname, first name, and last name. Do you really need that no, uh, no. just to get started, right? So it might be cool to just say, hey, what's your name? Enter like any nickname and afterwards I can still create a profile. If, if I just try to conclude on this part, the less question you will ask to your user, the less steps you have to do to be a fanboy of your application. So, uh, do you understand? No. Moins tu, mets, euh, moins tu poseras de questions à ton utilisateur avant de le passionner en voilà. lui montrant que ton jeu il est génial, euh, plus ce sera facile pour lui d'ouvrir la porte et plus ce sera facile pour lui d'y rester ensuite. Voilà. Vrai, non, mais c'est vraiment ça l'image. Déjà, fait, le premier pop-up, c'est parce qu'il y a beaucoup d'utilisateurs qui me disaient euh, y a rien, expliques rien dans ton application, on ne comprend pas. Alors j'ai mis le pop-up avec toutes les explications. C'est ça. Et, et donc ça, c'est un fixe rapide. Ouais, et l'idée voilà. que me disait Taylor, c'est de faire un vrai tuto animé oui, oui, qui te montre tout. Quoi, ouais. Mais bon, là, on a bien compris que de toute façon, there is a state of your application and there is the roadmap that the thing you will add and improve, for sure. 
That's just a feedback for yes. this uh, snapshot. Oh, snapshot. Okay. Uh, so I'll you just have to 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 set a nickname and uh, and uh, by USA. So that's all. Okay. It's it's uh, too long. Okay, so the red ah, bon. fields are mandatory yes. and the other one yes. you can leave them. Okay, uh, this is not clear actually. Yeah, uh, but when you when you quand on lance la page, c'est c'est écrit il y a Oh, okay. Cluster. When you on l'a pas vu. Okay. Euh. Non, c'est bon, pas besoin de remplir tout ça. Okay. okay. So save. Save sand. Save sand. You have a, a, a button, save, send. Is it save? Is it send? Is it uh, not uh, save, not send? Is it maybe OK? Or maybe start? Ça sauvegarde, mais si Internet, ça envoie aussi. S'il n'y a pas Internet, ça sauvegarde. OK, but you, you use on, you, your user don't care about it. And to have both, maybe you need a real reason. I, I, I'm not sure it's a real reason. Mais ouais, c'est qu'avant, j'avais séparé, sauvegardé et envoyé. Et One, one quick advice, uh, your user don't really care usually about implementation, so in that case, he doesn't care you're sending the information. Like for him, if he saves, the application is aware about it, so just say save, as in, okay. this is what I'm doing, I'm saving those informations, uh, that you're saving it in the cloud or on the phone, he doesn't have to care about it. Okay. One thing, I see that the first option is solo, so you can actually play it by yourself. Yes. Uh, so I'm asking, uh, If I have this option, so to play by myself, even offline, uh, why should I create a profile? Shouldn't I create a profile only if I click on multi, multiplayer? C'est le profil, c'est pour après envoyer les scores en ligne, ou aussi pour le multijoueur, ça sert à ça, le pseudo et, et la région. Translation, please. Ah, ah, oui, uh, it's, it's only to send. Uh, so in solo, you can get like scores, and then you can oh, send those scores. Send Then it's, it's the same as what we mentioned before. Then uh, just create the profile when you want to send the scores after a couple of games. <laughs> you so you have engagement. The user is playing before, and then once he's played, it says, "Okay, I'm going to send the scores now." J'ai fait le, le profil puisque avant je mettais l'utilisateur pouvait mettre le, le pseudo et le, le département qui, qui voulait à la fin pour les scores. Et il y en a plein qui s'amusaient à chaque fois à changer de, de pseudo tout le temps. Ils envoyaient 40 000 scores avec le même portable. So. Uh, Après, j Go with solo. Yes. Han solo. I'm easy. I cannot say anything, guys. <laughs> you just say you're easy. Okay, now Seb, <laughs> test your math. I'm easy. Uh, so first of all, I'm confused. Uh, what what does those mean? La difficulté en haut, les opérations. Okay, so I can just say I don't want to, I, I, I cannot divide, oh, which is actually true. Uh, and I'm really bad at multiplying and maybe even subtracting. So, uh, yeah, there's one, probably. Oh, I can go with none. Let's go with none. Uh, okay. Well, okay, when you, uh, that's, a, uh, that's a hidden feature. When you um, disable everything, you have all the thing, actually. <laughs> you lied to me. <laughs> okay, so, because I didn't read what it was saying at, the, at first, I don't know what Touch. I have to do. Touch. Okay. I get it. I'm really bad. Uh, Three, two. You are really bad. I know, but I'm under pressure. <laughs> Extreme pressure. I'm. I don't see. St uh, that I'm looking for the delete button, guys. Have patience. Um, thank you. So I barely. <laughs> It's freaking impossible to play a game like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I will. I would just actually like pause the thing. C can I pause the game somehow? No. Okay, I'm. No, you're stuck forever. I'm stuck. Uh, <laughs> this nine, nine. Nine. Okay. Uh, Eighteen. Sixty. I oh, know. I can do math. Oh, I'm just oh. really bad. Uh, hey, bravo! <laughs> so this is going online to testify how bad I am at math, which is fine. Your game is very fun. Okay, don't don't talk about the UI, but the the gameplay is good and they're really addictive. 
So there is a real potential on your app, but there are many, maybe we can just conclude right now, but there are many, 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 uh, uh, um, des épreuves à passer. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, challenges to arrive on your extremely good game. You see, so you have a real potential, and this is your IP, this is your cleverness. This, and before, uh, it was hard to see it, just, uh, and, I stop. Yeah, it's, it's exactly the same. Like as a user, I would have actually stopped probably either at the first uh, dialogue or at the registration process. Not that I've seen the game, I actually would enjoy it. So if I was able to play a couple of games uh, before registering, so then you still have a unique profile because I register afterwards, I would continue to play that game. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I have uh, just a small suggestion. Yeah, I will. it would be quick. quick. Stop it. Okay, maybe we could actually merge the tutorial and the first game so that you actually explain or let the user play a couple of games and then you can actually log in or whatever. So maybe you could try in that direction. Okay. And uh, again, UI. Uh, so we see right here the kind of game optic, uh, gamey dialogues with cartoonish optic. And before we saw the more Android Holo style dialogues. So um, you could either go for a fully customized UI and basically present this art style throughout the whole game so people feel really Im emerged and immersed in your game. Or I would probably stick to the holo style. Just uh, go for one art style, one UI style. Don't mix them up. Uh, essay that standard in the items of interface that you use. Essay that standard in the items of interface that you use. Je ne crois pas que ça perdra en personnalité sur ton application. Ça te permettra juste d'être plus standard, plus, plus, peut-être même un petit peu plus high candy, parce qu'il y a beaucoup de boulot qui est fait par les mecs de Google. Nous, les devs, on n'est jamais très très bons à Illustrator. Mais donc voilà, c'était un petit conseil. Et, et, et souvent, ça permet de garder, de faire en sorte que tes users aient déjà leurs réflexes, parce qu'ils savent quels sont les items, comment on les utilise. Voilà. I think we're done. Yes. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Really. Okay. Et, je pense qu'on peut doublement l'applaudir so, parce qu'il faut vraiment one. être courageux. Euh... Sorry. Il faut vraiment être courageux uh, pour faire ce genre de truc. Donc Swiss vraiment... plates auto index. <laughs> ah. Ok. So, that's yours. Ok, you want to introduce your app quickly? Hello, yeah. 30 seconds. The, <laughs> the app okay. is only available in Switzerland. Uh, it, it's uh, for Swiss car plates. Uh, in Switzerland, you can, uh, you can know the people behind the, the plate if you scan the. If you type the, the plate number, you can have the, the street address and the, where he lives. And the application, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work for all um, states, if you can call so, uh, or province, but uh, it works for some of them. And uh, the other one needs SMS, the other one needs uh, other interface system, and I have done uh, this, um, this merge uh, work. That's okay, it. so. The design uh, is three years old. I guess, well, it's a nice car anyway. Um, I guess that uh, the reason why I was asked during install, uh, the ability to send SMS was because some of the services you use actually require yeah. that. I, I, did. I didn't read the, the description, yeah, but I, if, if, you, if you don't say why you need SMS, it's probably a good idea to state it, like pretty bold. It's not, I'm trying to call uh, Russian crazy services, <laughs> five euros a minute. Yeah, one thing about, uh, when you add these kind of permissions and you want your application to be featured on Google Play, uh, you really, really, really um, decrease the chance for you to be featured because of this kind of uh, permission if your not application is not done for that. So that's on the Google requirements. Yeah, I explained it, but it's in the <laughs> low. Yeah, maybe putting it a bit higher, like yeah. first thing we see when we read the description, I guess. Yeah. Okay. You can try to, ch to change the, um, the content in the top. There is a top menu in the lef okay. left. Let me fail. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I would say you probably don't need to have that feature that prominently, like here, maybe in an overflow or something. Because, I mean, it. The idea is that on the action bar, 
um, the things that you always show are things that users are supposed to use at least once every time they open the app. And I don't see users opening the about box every time they open the app. So probably some you could have it in the overflow or in some other place maybe. But for one equal one hmm? overflow and one. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Because I mean, at some point you might need to add something else, and you already have the overflow, so that's fine. And to be honest, it's not it's not a bad thing. I mean. Set the, the settings icon, the, the settings menu item is, is always supposed to be in the overflow menu. Okay. Unless you're Google and you place it in the navigation drawer, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, this one is history. Okay. So let's see the history. Okay. Um, yeah. Taylor, when, when you want to say something, just raise your hand or nod. <laughs> okay, this probably you don't want to show it if there's nothing yeah. to, to select. And also this one means select all, so I don't know if it actually what it does. Yes. Okay, just checking. <laughs> um, well. Okay, um, I have a small suggestion. Maybe if the history is empty, instead of actually let the user go in there, because actually you won't find anything, you can just hide the icon. And second thing, that I am extremely lazy, so I see that, I don't know actually what to do. So maybe something that uh, can focus my attention somewhere where you want my input could help a bit. Okay. Um, I guess the issue is that user input is not that prominent in the action bar in the upper left corner, right? Because that's usually where my thumb navigates. So if you probably would have like some kind of edit texts, maybe even below the car, um, and maybe already pre-fill it with something, so that it appears on the sign, it would be very clear that if you manipulate the t edit text, the license plate would change. But when you open the app, the keyboard is already open, and there is the focus. It didn't open. Not now, because you go <laughs> no, into no, the story. There is no virtual device on Oh, so it's your fault. Okay. Motion no. fault. <laughs> No, that's your fault. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> it's always my fault anyway. Uh, I was like, now I would be tempted to tap on the on the license plate to input stuff, but yeah. it doesn't do anything, I guess. Type on the keyboard. Yeah, I tried. The, the, the oh, number. just numbers. Okay. Oh, okay. But th there is no way of telling that the ah. text thing is focused. Yeah, so I, fixed, I fixed that bug. It was uh, due to the Nexus uh, the 4.2. Update and I didn't fix it in the in the production uh, for now. That was a bug that has been solved. Before 4.2, we will have, we'll have the the cursor blinking, and now that there is not, but I've fixed it. Okay. Also, uh, one thing about UI, and uh, definitely Taylor can correct me, but uh, our beachy Nexus is uh, basically high resolution, and so it's supposed to be a big phone. But I wonder uh, what is the size on a smaller device. Um, oh, the design of the plate, the design of the car, uh, it's going to be probably really small. Think about a 3.2 inch screen. So, uh, I don't know, maybe just enlarge the image when the user tap on the plate could be an option. Um, in order to, you know, focus the attention and at the same time have the react to screen, screen sizes. Yeah, and um, another thing. I know that you should have the keyboard popping up, but it's a bit empty down there. Yeah. Maybe you want to have something like, I don't know, I'm not the designer. One thing as well, when you enter like uh, information like this, which is, I'm suppose, supposed to follow a certain format, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, in here, I don't know when I'm supposed to send information. Uh, it would be good to have uh, a sort of validation of the input, and maybe something will change on the UI once I reach a valid uh, plate, and I can actually uh, start the query. But every num every number could be valid. It's uh, <laughs> I don't know before doing the request. Uh, there's there's no specified format. No, only number. Yeah, but I tried typing letters because I don't know anything about Swiss license plates, and uh, I was like, it doesn't work. 
I guess that problem doesn't exist on the phone because he specified numbers, so you'll only have numbers on the virtual keyboard. I don't know that. <laughs> and um, a question I would be, how do you submit it? Uh, it's in the keyboard, the OK button. <laughs> okay. Okay. You should put it in there. Yeah. Okay. This, uh, this, um, this, uh, the chosen countdown, the, the, the states. Okay. Uh, the uh, if, 30 it's, seconds, if it's going for SMS, we probably won't no, work. No, this one not. Okay. Just but this one, uh, th there is no interface to, to get the, the data, so I had to, to pass a HTML page, and uh, it could take more or less time depending wow. on the on the content yeah. the states. So, uh, Maybe I don't understand the use case, but what is your, the, the interest to have these kind of blocking dialogues? <coughs> Just the user can do anything else uh, useful <laughs> in the app. Okay, uh, so it needs to do one action, yeah. uh, and this action has to be finished before starting another? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay, and uh, when I press back, is the action canceled? Because yeah. the dialogue disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, just a few things that um, I noticed here that's very important that um, we should not rely on the keyboard key to submit something. I mean, we can make it a shortcut um, that for the, use, the power user that knows that the enter button will be submitting something, but it will be nice to have some indication or a, an UI element on the screen to allow the user actually send it. Then the second part, of course, is the loading screens. Um, first thing is that I saw that it mentions it can take up to 30 seconds. So actually, you will not know it. Um, it's just an estimation. So if the search takes more than 30 seconds, the user will feel very disappointed because you are saying that it's 30 seconds. So try not to give a time range unless you are really, really sure about that and there's no other, um, uh, how do you say? There's no other factors that can affect it. Otherwise, um, tell the user politely that it might take a while. But I mean, don't tell them like 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 30 seconds. Yes. And of course, um, if you attend my talk, um, you can easily mask this wait, waiting experience into something really interesting. Like for example, if you submit this one, you see a car going through a road trip, you know, some, 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 some kind of um, animation, some kind of a visual animation that the user will enjoy while waiting for the results. So that can actually easily um, help the user to keep waiting for the results instead of like the user keeps see, seeing the spinning indicator and then they will just click it and just uninstall the app. So some, some, some um, time wasting um, experience masking. Uh, would I have one thing I don't might make sense or not in your case, probably. Uh, but if it's something that you know is going to take a long time every time you do it, not, it, it doesn't really depend on the network or stuff. You might just want to like refocus your, your app in something like your minion. So you just tell the app, okay, let me know about that license plate. And then the app tells you, okay, I'm doing your work. You can just go back to whatever you were doing before. And when it's ready, you just get a notification or something like that. It would probably make the user experience better instead of staring at something. Because even an animation after 30 seconds or more can be annoying. <laughs> yeah. And if you really have to keep the user with a loading dialogue, as Taylor mentioned, uh, a nice animation uh, is, is, does quite, quite the trick. A good example is Captain Train. Yeah. You know, if you've used the app, they have that nice animation of the train going forward. Yeah. Uh, it's silly, but it does the trick. It's kind of like, oh, I'm happy. I'm looking at this, and uh, keeps you busy for a bit. I'm all like, doof, doof. <laughs> OK, so we run out of time. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. It was really interesting. Uh, so the next one was. Okay, so we're going to go Monde. into Le Monde. Please come. Okay, splash screen. Okay, we need a translator, please. Okay, so Ben. So first one is now, second one is later. Yes. 
Donc euh, ce n'est pas une application personnelle, on travaille sur une équipe de 4 au monde pour la faire. Et euh, je pense que vous connaissez tous le monde, donc c'est l'application du journal qui permet de voir hein, toute l'actu en continu, la une et les différentes rubriques. Poster des commentaires, etc. So it's not a personal app, it's an app you worked like in a team to create. So it's the official app from the newspaper, Le Monde. Okay. Uh, and it's the app you can use to read the newspaper, get like the headlines, uh, everything you would expect from a newspaper app, I guess. Uh, so this says you can uh, choose your landing screen uh, and you can say now or later. Uh, I'm lazy. <laughs> and also, as Taylor said in his talk, uh, users usually rely on defaults. So probably just letting them choose, maybe after a while that they use, they've used the app, maybe not the first time they open it, like after a couple of days, 10 times they open it, you just tell them, uh, you have seen it so far, it might be interesting in trying something else, but probably the first time I, I open it, I don't know the difference between the two yeah. things, so I don't really care, it's just like, nah. Yeah, that was exactly what I was gonna yeah. say. I have no idea what the landing screen means for that app, because I've never used it before. En fait, so, on, yeah. on a mis ça en place parce qu'on a déjà pas mal d'utilisateurs en fait, de l'application, on avait mis euh, en page d'accueil une nouvelle fonctionnalité qui des fois n'était pas aimée, ils voulaient revenir à l'ancienne. Du coup, c'est pour ça qu'on leur proposait, dès la mise à jour, de pouvoir switcher entre les deux. Ok, donc so this was for uh, legacy customers, I guess, that updated to the new version. Yeah. But then, it's better to figure out a way to find, like to define what is a legacy customer and yeah. uh, do not display that for new users because it's really confusing. Yeah. I mean, if, uh, if a user is updating, you know that, because you're basically upgrading the app, so just show them the old one, and after a couple of days, you can tell them. And if it's a, if it's a new user, don't ever tell them that there was a thing before that. <laughs> That's gonna be the, the, the only one, because at some point, you just wanna discontinue the old one, so. Um, so right now, we see this UI, because I think the connection is terrible, and you see that there is this button that really doesn't look nicely put into the UI. And also we saw, I think, two toasts pop popping up, not just one, saying, I think we first said I couldn't get the new yeah. kind of journal, and the second one, I don't know. Um, I'm not a big fan of toasts in general, because usually if I just stare at something else for like a second, I missed the notification, I don't know what's going on. And it just says connection error, I guess, yeah. <laughs> and retry. and. Um, Right now, that doesn't really feel very rewarding. So you might want to do like one of those pull to refresh patterns or something to make it a bit nicer in terms of the UI. And also, when you opened up the, or when we opened up the app and we chose the new mode, it show, uh, showed us the dialogue without presenting any content. So it's really just an empty list view or anything like that. Ah, now it loads something. So if you could maybe show some dummy content or something like yeah. how it would look like if something would be there, yeah. that would be kind of interesting. In case of uh, failures in general, a uh, good thing is get inspired from the web really, like 404, like 404 errors on web pages. GitHub, GitHub <laughs> loads of really funny things. You can just put like a, a funny image saying, oops, yeah. something went wrong, sorry, or whatever. Uh, like Google send message to a monkey team. Uh, really something funny, a nice image just to make the user kind of laugh about it a bit and forget the bad experience. Depends on the audience, though. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the audience, it's true. Can be more or less serious, I mean, depending on, yeah, depending on the brand in this case, probably. This should be more serious, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's not really loading images, but network, I guess. So, okay, starting to get something. Uh, I would say I really like the timeline thing. It's interesting. I want to see. Um, yeah, it's nice. Really nice. Good design. So, uh, what what do you guys do? You want to do? I mean, I, I'm gonna click random stuff. Okay, I'm a monkey. We know. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, is this? I uh, don't know, sh there should be text here? Yeah. Okay. So maybe something that makes me understand that 
there should be something, but it's not. But, uh, because like, like now it looks like you forgot to put stuff there. Yeah. I know it's not, you know it's not your fault, but <laughs> I'm, I'm doomed <laughs> and I don't understand. But, uh, that. Don't put the video on, uh, on Dailymotion, there will be a crash. Mm. Okay, so yeah, because you, you even have the text. Yeah. So you should probably, at the very least, show the same thing in the other page. Because there's a really nice transition, but ends up empty. So when there is a video feed, I usually like when I can see the video both in thumbnail mode and in full screen mode. So this is like kind of like a full screen mode for me. Yeah. It would be cool if I go to the article overview and I could see the video just running in the background or something like that if I choose to. So um, like yeah, like YouTube does. I think that's a pretty cool effect. Ah, yeah, that's obviously much um, nicer. Uh, y a, y a réseau, pardon. Du coup, il n'a pas pu télécharger la CSS de la WebView qui est en bas, c'est pour ça qu'il n'y avait rien. Oh, so the <laughs> idea is this down is not the same content as before, it's a WebView, mm -hmm. so it couldn't load CSS of the WebView and couldn't display anything. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just, guys, tap me or wave me or anything. Okay, toast. <laughs> Please get rid of the toast. Because... <laughs> Especially if you give uh, information that exposed how you implemented it in the toast, I think it adds especially um, like hostile to users because they they don't know most of the the time they don't even care. It's just like it works or it doesn't work. Um, especially for network related stuff, if you say like uh, no connection or bad connection, uh, there's a nice library called Crouton. And uh, it's basically a persistent thing at the top. Yeah. So you can replace your toast with that. Uh, and it will, it will stay there, so you can't miss it. And it's really good for bad network, because then you see like a red thing at the top saying like a uh, bad connection. Yeah. So like, okay, I'm con I'm, maybe I'll try in 10 minutes or so. What? <laughs> <laughs> One thing I want to say, um, when I start scrolling the text, actually the um, video stays there. So I don't know if it's, on purpose, like I want to read the stuff and in the same time see the video. Uh, I don't know if even that's possible. So probably it would be a good idea if this just the, the preview of the video to embed all of this inside a scroll view. And maybe make the action bar transparent. So if I scroll through the all uh, scroll view, I can still see at a certain time that there's something above it like a video. So I don't have to scroll using only half of the screen, but using the, the complete, yes. Uh, one thing that Sebastiano just mentioned, at the bottom there was a React link, yeah. Reagissez. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming this is to like comment on stuff. Yeah. Uh, this is a really good example where it would have been good to try and find a native view or something, because I'm not even sure how this is gonna work. Can you try and click on it yeah. to comment? I'm, I'm seeing like a, uh, network error here, which is probably something you want to avoid because it gives away that you're using a web view and that feels kind of cheap and it's also exposing internal URIs, which yeah. you probably don't want to expose. So, it's yeah, uh, as uh, you know, iframe ad mob, use the SDK, <laughs> it crashes anyway, but try to use it. <laughs> So uh, w when you want to uh, comment on something, is it still within the web view or? Yes. Uh, yeah. No, it is a, pardon. C'est un bouton et quand on va cliquer dessus, en fait, il y a une autre activité qui va se lancer pour, uh, pour qu'on commente. D'accord. So it's starting a new activity okay. to comment on things. Yep. Ideally, you would want to have it all in the, in the same place. You don't want to take the user out. Out of time, <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Taylor, you want to add anything? Yeah, just, just, just a small thing. Um, if you can go back. Yeah. So um, one very small, one very small, uh, one very big opportunity actually to, to, to provide a continuity experience is that if you can go back and go back to the video again. Yeah, click on the video. So you can see that um, there's kind of a disconnection between these two screens. So what in material design that we really focus on is the continuity experience. So what you can easily do, I think, um, is that you can expand the video 
from the list view immediately to these screens to give the immersive experience that they are, they are actually the same thing. So this one, it looks very different and disconnected, just an activity just flying in, and you, 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 you can't feel the continuity there. So if you really want to embrace material design, this is the way that you should um, implement and think how content flow <coughs> um, so that the user will not be surprised by what is actually happening next after the interactions. Yeah, I mean, um, actually, um, most of the time, you will not need icons. Why? Because the word is clear enough what each option should do. So icons become pretty much um, useless in this case. So, and especially for sometimes, the problem is that some action is pretty tricky to be, res uh, to be resembled by some icons. So. If you put stuff into an overflow menu, it will mean just text, no icon needed. Yeah. yeah, and one last thing about the menu. You probably want to expose, share, and add to favorites because it's something that a user is actually likely to do on, on the article, so. Okay, uh, thank you. That's thank you. So last one is Ampres, I guess, if that makes any sense in French. Okay, so Impress is a B2B app to enable employees to a company to give feedback to each other. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you want. So, uh, are we allowed to log in? Uh, yeah, sure. Or as though you want to try the onboarding. So, oh, let's discover right, it, let's you. discover it. This is nice. You probably might want to have something like, instead of saying next and then also having the gesture, you probably just need to hint at the gesture with something that moves. Just yeah, just True. once, I mean, yeah. it's a common pattern. Yeah, the graphics are really good. This is a really good onboarding, apart from the next. Uh, okay, uh, what should I click it? Okay. Oh, okay. This is nice. This is a nice custom view. I'm a superhero, of course. <laughs> well, I'm not Luke, but Luke is. I know him. Uh, Okay, so uh, I guess I don't know if there's any meaningful way to use it without being logged in. No, uh, that's why we. I mean, we try to put this at component. the same time. Uh, I guess this is register, yeah. and uh, this is just login. This is probably this was in the first screen as well. Yes. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I might like the onboarding and just go through it every time. No, of course uh, not. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to take a look at that. Well, yeah. I can sign you in if you want. Or? There is actually one thing I'd love to see. Um, it's in the password field that you, I guess you allow, <laughs> <laughs> I guess you allow that users can show and hide the password, right? Yeah, exactly. That's really fantastic because lots of people don't do that and especially on mobile phones, it's such a pain to enter any kind of data. So, good work. Thanks. Uh, actually it's so I, I can see my intro, super secure again. password. Is it only while I'm tapping it? I'm pressing and holding it, which ah, pops okay. up the paste thing. It probably you might want to disable it. Can you recharge, please? Yeah, it helps. Okay, but it's actually showing Yeah, it's like that's default. That's fine. Um, one thing here that I see missing is a big logging with Google thingy here. Like I cannot be bothered using like typing in stuff. Yeah, after we still, um, if you type the email address, it takes, it autocompletes from your uh, email account. So, yeah. So it still helps, but yeah, we're working on the Google integration. Okay, um, 
Always regarding the password, maybe on mobile will be a bit easier if you could just persist the state when you actually press once on the eye. So that you press once, the password stay visible until you press again. So okay. it's easier because if I make a mistake, I have to tap somewhere, then try to go back, uh, and it's just a lot of taps and I'm lazy. Yeah. And Vici. Yeah. Should we go through? Yeah, I'm going to sign up now, so it's gonna go for It's totally invented, not. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's definitely my full name. So here, I think it's the same thing that we said before. You probably want to have a fallback for the enter key somewhere, because I'm just supposing that enter works, yeah. but that's right. it might not be immediately uh, clear to anybody. Here's like test. Don't hack my account. Uh, uh, <laughs> a bit longer. Longer. Eight, yeah, six. Test. Again. Yeah. Yay. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay, so. Okay, this works as expected. Maybe having it inside of the app. Why is it? Okay. Um, if you can avoid opening the browser and maybe having something coming up and yeah. keeping the user in there and maybe still keeping the sign up button visible, that would make it easier marginally easier. This one, eh. <laughs> Always regarding password, I love passwords. Uh, maybe if you want the password to be len um, length at least six, you could actually put an indicator bottom or somewhere that shows you what you shall do. Because if I don't know, I just stay there and that's not good. Uh, now, I press sign up okay. and I saw a crouton exactly. appearing and disappearing. What did it say? <laughs> I did not have time to read, but... And you are the developer, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the error can be different. I don't know, I guess it was a network error. So, yeah, probably you want to work on, the, on, the, on that feedback, like at least keeping the crouton yeah. uh, showing for some more time. Let's see if it works now. We can do the network dance. Doesn't work. No. no. Because I'm bad at dancing. Oh. Again. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah. <laughs> so apart from the error message that of course you have to be persisted to, to be there for the user to know it. Um, one missed opportunity here is of course uh, I think most of the app doesn't do this. But it's actually really, really interesting to do this. So what you see here is that um, you have to enter your email address, your full name, and your password um, in one screen. So on a mobile devices, especially on a phone, tablet maybe is OK. But on a phone devices, what you can do is actually em embrace a wizard type, a, a wizard screens. So you just ask information one at a time. So what's, what's the advantage of this is that the user will not feel stressed or feel frustrated because he already foresee what he has to enter to sign up. But of course, the fact that he still needs to enter all these things, but at least it eliminates a lot of problems. Like for example, the keyboard pops up that actually covers some of the things, and then the user have to scroll up. I mean, in this case, of course, Sebastian is using on the keyboard. But let's say if you have a soft keyboard pop up, props up, it actually covers half of the content. So what you can do is that you just need to separate this into three screens. So first is the email, second is full name, the last is password, and probably the last screens of summaries. And when the user is confident that the information that they, they want to send is confirmed and is correct, you can just click sign up and then everything will be in place. So these are one of the things that a lot of apps didn't do it. Um, I don't know for what reason, but it's a way to actually en encourage the user to actually enter the data for you to use. So that's one missed opportunity, yes. Uh, one thing I noticed, you don't have landscape. You just have portrait. Yeah, that's true. Shame on you. Uh, <laughs> okay, and then I can actually clear up my name now and still press sign in. Probably you want to yeah, do something the about that. The should display you that you need a full name. Yeah, but I'm just gonna go back Back, I said. 
and I'll let you sign in. Ahem. Ahem. You don't see anything. Do. Mm. So your app turned into Le Monde? <laughs> yep, the app crashed. Oh, okay, crashed. Oh, yeah. Let's give it a try. Try again. Don't click things. <laughs> uh, sorry. No, it's an English keyboard. That's always my fault. <laughs> that was my best side. I have a question in the while. I saw that uh, you actually said that the survey here, the feedback, is anonymous, right? Yes. So why is a user should give you my name? I mean, okay, email and password for login, but then if it's anonymous, maybe you could remove my name. Um, well, when you give feedback to someone, you still want to see his name. Um, I mean, it, you have the list of uh, employees of your company, um, it's still, it's more human, I think, to see uh, the profile picture and the name of someone when you want to give him feedback on some, because, yes. especially because it's anonymous, we already lose a bit of so this you, you social thing. Make, you don't want the user who makes the service, to, who completes the survey, to, who gives feedback, informations, but you should know who you're giving informations. About, right? Okay, no. I mean, we might have some yeah. server troubles or also in network here. I don't know. So over here, we're actually missing the crouton notifications that we had before. At least yeah. I didn't notice them yet now. Um, so if you notify your users through crouton, I would do it consistently. Yeah. And um, well, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm gonna check this login and signing. Yeah, I mean, you you have had a lot of feedbacks on the signing. <laughs> because <laughs> that's true. But that's good. <laughs> but, uh, but yes. yeah, uh, probably one of. Yeah. It's going to be one badass login port. Yeah, it's going to be the best logging ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> In landscape. <laughs> no. <laughs> mm, okay. Probably, yeah. yeah, I think it, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Any other things? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the interaction? Yeah, I mean, um, of course, in this case, um, if you look at the onboard experience, it's really good um, in a way that the user doesn't have to lock in before they actually know the values that your app can bring to them. Um, of course, there is some missed opportunity here, of course, like talk about the sign-in. Um, you can try to, I mean, the logo is so nice, so you can have some way to animate it, to, to just give, you know, it's, 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 it's all like we are trying to make the customer happy. And, in, and, and it's our job to actually create that delightful details. So, like for example, in this case, sign in. Um, of course, the loading indicator is definitely is already in the wrong positions. But what you can do is also some some kind of animated logos that divert the user attention from the um, time time wait, um, waiting experience. And yeah, that that's that's what I can say because we cannot sign in. But of course, I mean, one very important point to take away here is um, um, it's. When I saw Jenny Motion, Jenny Motion was introducing the um, connection simulator, it was a really, really good feature because always try to 
implement and design your features using the slowest speed as much as you can. Because you have to understand that when you are using 4G, you are not always getting a 4G signals. Even 3G, you are not getting a 3G signals and you have intermittent connection issues sometimes. So always test and implement in a way that you anticipate a very slow connection but still display useful, inf useful information to the user so that they don't feel that something is just hotting there but they have that kind of seamless and continuity experience, which is something, again, something material design is actually pushing. So that's what I will have to say for this. So the takeaway is test your app of conferences. Okay. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK. OK. So we're, we're done? I think we are done. We're done. Uh, thank you, everyone, for thank coming. You. Uh, thank you to the developers that were bitched at. Uh, sorry if I offended anyone. Uh, and uh, well, enjoy the rest of DroidCon tomorrow, guys. Thank you. Thank you.